My name is Xavi Ecos. I'm a GP in Barcelona. I'm also working at the university as associate professor, and I'm the chair of Primary Care Diabetes Europe. And I think that one of the important aspects I want to share with the primary care community, with my peers, is how important it is to test those persons that could be at high risk to develop chronic kidney disease. Of course, CKD is a relevant disease, a relevant problem. We have to pay attention from the primary care domain. The latest information we have available is around 700 million citizens in the, in the globally that have this uh, chronic disease, chronic problem. It claims attention for all the primary care a community to be aware and probably for that perspective be proactive to be screened and detected. In our clinic, in, in the primary care, what we are normally visiting is anything. I mean, patients came to our clinics for any reason, for a cough, for a flu, for uh, stomach pain. We have to keep the mind very clear. That it means that when we have in front of us an individual that is maybe over 45, 50 years old, is hypertensive or is living with diabetes, maybe this lipidemia is probably smoking, some of the risk factors we already know, cardiovascular risk factors, is also an individual with a higher risk of chronic kidney disease. One very relevant aspect is to have access to those uh, determinations that allow us to make a good assessment in what situation is that kidney function or the kidney in that individual. For example, the normal parameters we use to assess are the EGFR or maybe the albuminin creatinine ratio are those ones that normally are the, those parameters that invites us to test those persons in terms to assess what are their kidney status, their kidney function or their kidney damage status. The function we can have with an estimation. We have many formulas, but we have many of the labs are already providing an estimation of a GFR. Uh, and also in some countries, you can calculate yourself with um, uh, systems that allow you to have an assessment. So this is enough. You don't need to have the, the electronics is ideal, but if you don't have it, you can calculate yourself. When you have a person that, have, that is diagnosed with CKD, we are in front of a high risk individual. And that means that they have a higher risk to have uh, cardiovascular problems as a heart attack and other vascular problems. It means that you have to be proactive, don't delay actions. The thing is sometimes when we are starting medication, sometimes it's too late. We are already been losing a lot of the capacity in that case of the kidney. As I said, um, diabetes is a chronic disease we are managing and we know we have evidence since 2008 about metabolic legacy. So. In terms of the kidney, we, have, we already have some figures that allow us to understand that it's important an early treatment because that protects the kidney and makes the, this decline we are observing changing the trend in terms of the kidney disease evolution. It's important that when we would like to condense all of this information around the kidney in something that we keep in mind a very fast way, as easy as ABC. A stands for angiotensin receptor blocker or ACE inhibitor. These are the cornerstone therapies for people with albuminuria. And I think we have to consider that once as a first choice for any person living with hypertension. B stands for blood pressure control. It's very important, not just using the appropriate control medication, also what is the control we are reaching. And in that case, systolic blood pressure must be below 120 when possible. C, cardiovascular risk reduction. Estatins for lipid control, diet, exercise, aspects we have to keep in mind for that cardiovascular risk approach. D stands for diabetes control. Values of A1C below seven, but always we have to individualize that target. E stands for evidence-based kidney and cardiovascular therapies. That means all of that we have available that already have evidence that are good ones to be using in that situation as SRCT2 inhibitors, NSMRA compounds, or GLP-1 receptor agonist compounds. There are the three families that demonstrate benefits. And F is the letter that represents follow-up. 
we need to be concerned is not just providing a compound, it's not just do the assessment, it's the follow-up. And we are, we are observing things are not working well, compounds are not operating in the way we would like. We have to refer that patient to a specialist, in that case, nephrologist, without delaying the action.